Hey guys, happy Wednesday. Mama C here with a quick word. So um, lately I've been watching a lot of testimonies on YouTube um, just about other people's experiences with God and um, and it kind of inspired me to share mine uh, more in detail. I always talk about my journey up into celibacy, how um, God gave me a word. It took me about a year to really be obedient and walk in it. Um, but I want to read the actual notes from the encounter that I had with God back in 2019. Um, these are, it's a little bit hard rereading them because um, a lot of them have already shown to be true. Um, so it, it's just crazy to see how um, God gives us warnings um, and God allows us to know better. Um, and some of, us, some of us decide to um, ignore them and some of, some of us decide to think that it's not real, but others of us realize that um, some, some things truly are warnings and some things truly are uh, signs from God that he wants more from us. So at the time that I got these notes um, in, the, in this word, which I, I do believe is a prophetic word from God, um, I wasn't living right. I was fornicating and I was trying to stop, but I just didn't know how. Um, I wanted to follow God, but I was just in a really bad space and I was listening to a, a uh, podcast and uh, I think her name is Tatum and it's called Blessed and Bossed Up. So I always give her a shout out because that's where it really all started for me. Um, but I was listening to it and she had a thing where she said, go sit with God and just allow God to speak to you and write it down. And then um, so it was like a combination probably with about like I think the process was about at least an hour and a half. Um, I prayed. I worshiped. I sat in silence. I journaled. Um, and I really just spent time with God and asked God, like, I know I'm not living right. I know I'm not doing what you're doing, but if you could just meet me here right now, if you can just give me a word on what you want from me, God, like, please, I just, I need something. So this is what I got and I'll go through, I'll try to explain it on the way, um, as best as I can. So it says, um, set time aside. Um, the date on this is made on July 18, 2019. Um, it says, you are welcome here. Um, it says, clean it up. Could you imagine you can have the future you want? It's there, but you have to surrender. You have to change. No sex, self-control, Proverbs 31. I will give you the tools. Follow me. Powerful, that's what you are. You know what's right. Speak less. Your time will come. Sadness. So, so right around this point, um, if you, when you're listening to this, it's kind of going in order because when God said, clean it up, could you imagine you can have the future that you want? It's there, but you have to surrender. You have to change. No self-control, uh, uh, no sex self-control. Um, God actually gave me a vision of a lottery ticket. And what I seen was um, like a lottery ticket for like a million dollars. And I remember um, God was like, could you imagine someone saying, I'll give you this lottery ticket. Um, it has a million dollars. But before I can give it to you, you have to stop doing this X, Y, and Z, right? And for me at the time, it was sex. And God had been telling me to be celibate and, and, just, and just trust him for six months. Um, and I wasn't doing that of course so god was like could you imagine like someone saying or for let's say for you it's drinking or it's sex or it's lying or if it's stealing or whatever your struggle is porn uh, masturbation the list goes on of things that people struggle with right so what god's like well could you imagine someone saying i'll give you a million dollars if you stop doing that Stop drinking alcohol for six months. Stop having sex for six months. Stop doing this. And because of your lack of self-control, you don't get the money and you don't get that. And, and not only will that million dollars change your life, but that million dollars can change everybody else's life around you. And that's kind of like the way that God had shown me like sin affects us all. Like, you know, as a mother or as a person, like you sinning or you struggling with certain things directly impact your children, directly impact your job, directly impact everything around you. And sometimes God will give us the opportunity to get whatever we want, whatever, if it's love or, or, you know, whatever the desires of our heart. Um, but we have to learn to sacrifice and surrender and stop 
doing the things that we know we're not supposed to do in order to get something. It doesn't just pop up out of nowhere. So that's what God had told me. And I was like, wow. And so I remember being in that moment, just kind of like, I don't know what that looks like. Um, I've never done this before. So right after that, God said, I will give you the tools to follow me powerful that's what you are so god knows our heart he knows what we're thinking even if we don't say it and so in these moments you can just see doubt seeping into my thoughts while i'm writing this because i've never done anything like this i'm like not having sex like and i always say it's not that i was a sex addict or i was struggling that crazy but i just love somebody and i wanted to be with them and i was giving my body to them because i thought that that would make our relationship stronger i thought that would make them see my value which it did not um and so god is like sarah no that's just not it so um when he's telling me this i'm like scared so he says i will give you the tools follow me powerful that's what you are you know what's right speak less your time will come um in that time i was in a place of over explaining myself trying to find validation just just doing the most just unsatisfied um, and then I got sad. And so it says sadness, no need for it. This is a good thing, purifying you, uh, pruning you. And so pruning is when, um, it's like a tree, like, you know, like, um, taking things off of the tree, cleaning it up client kind of. So God's like, don't be sad about this. What I'm telling you, um, I'm going to give you the tools. I'm, I'm purifying you right now. And I'm pruning you. Um, alcoholic is what you attract a life of misery. Regret is what you will get. And around the time I was dealing with, um, I was not dating, but I was trying to move on from a situation and I was like, just trying to distract myself. But at the time I was dealing with a lot of men that struggled with alcoholism and come to find out my father actually was struggling with, um, is, uh, is a recovering alcoholic. So it was crazy getting this word. I'm like, wow, like I'm, I'm I don't struggle with alcohol, but God was allowing me to see that alcoholic is what I attract. Um, he said, trust me, stability. So God told me he was going to bring me stability. This magical moment you think is going to happen tomorrow with zero preparation is not. That was, that was a, a big, a big one for me. Cause I was like, God, I want a husband. God, I want this person to love me. God, I want to heal. And I wasn't willing to do nothing to prepare for it. I wasn't willing to give anything up. And God's like, I want to let you know that that's not going to happen. Um, um, God also said, my children, I discipline different, handle different. Keep your mouth off of them. Um, and another thing that God showed me was, um, just like a parent, you, you parent each child different. Um, one kid could do something and they might not get in that much trouble because it may be for a different reason, but another, another kid does it and you may punish them harder, but it's, it's a parent that decides it's not the bystanders. It's none of them. They didn't create them. They didn't come from them. So, you know, it, it's respecting that parent's decisions. And that's what God was telling me. God's like, um, they're my children. The people that you're looking at, the people that you're judging, the people that you're speaking on, they're my children. You keep your mouth off of them. So it was a very humbling moment for me in that moment. Um, another thing he says, your thoughts are jumbled. Mine are clear. You know when it's me. Whatever it takes. Um, it says, wake up early. Don't do it. I remember in this moment I had an I thought, to be honest, it's so crazy. I had a thought about having sex with somebody while read while getting this word from God and it says don't do it crazy um the next thing it says your body is your temple infested dirty baggage and when I seen this um when this happened I literally seen pillars marble pillars um It's okay. Um, I see marble pillars and they were beautiful. I remember they were so beautiful. And I walked up on them. I was like, wow. But when I walked up on them, I seen rats. I seen dirt. It was just filthy, dirty, just 
It was just nasty. And I remember God was like, this is how people look. On the outside, they're so beautiful, like marble pillars. You're like, wow, they're so great. But when you get up on them, you start to see how infested and how dirty they are. And it's and, and after that, God said, don't allow anyone to have you. Um, they are bringing their baggage. And that's every time we sleep with somebody and every time we open up ourselves to others, um, that's what we're doing. We're allowing people to bring their dirt in there. And they're, we're allowing people to infest our space. And um, that's what God was telling me. And then he said, there will be good people who go to hell. Godly good people is the way they can go. They, they can go together. Because I used to think that, well, they're good people and it doesn't matter. Um, you can be a great person. You can do good deeds. But if you do not live by God's word and if you do not believe in God, if you do not serve Jesus and surrender your life, it doesn't matter. You there is a heaven or hell and that's a hard reality that we don't want to believe in but it's the truth um and then after that uh god it says racism is not the way love my people manifest the life you want move out of the way face yourself and that's it so real quick i want i'm trying to make this in enough time to where i can fit it on instagram but i'm also gonna uh, talk a little bit more after and put it on uh, youtube but the biggest thing was racism is not the way love my people Listen, around the time that I read this, I was most definitely in a place where I was angry because a person that I loved and cared for um, left me and just was very hurtful to me. And I was trying to find a place to fit in. And around this time, this was when it just seemed like the whole racial thing started becoming big, like pro-black and, um, you know, um, a lot of activism stuff start coming out and people started, you know, just being more for their, their people, which was black for me. And, um, I started going hard. I used to be like looking at other races and be like, uh, this, or like have a hatred in my heart for let's be 100 transparent, you know, white people, um, just anger and hatred in my heart, but it really wasn't it was more of a reflection of how I felt inside and I had no way to really express it. And that was a way that I felt that I could express it in a way that I could connect with other people that looked like me. And this was that first time that I ever had that correction. No one else around me was correcting me. No one else was willing to really say that I was racist. No one ever was really telling me that that wasn't godly. So God literally said, racism is not the way love my people. And I was like, Hey. And after that day, my perspective changed. Like, um, I literally stopped. I stopped engaging in like evil talk against other races. Everybody has bad. Everybody has good. I do still choose to love my people. I am a black woman, so I understand it. And it does break my heart and it does make me angry still but it doesn't make me have hatred for every single person that comes across me it's not my job to look at this person as less than because god says that all his people are made in his image black white mexican hispanic it doesn't matter what it is asian it doesn't matter we all are accountable to God. We all are going to be judged by God. We all go through heartache and pain. And there's still, there's always a reason for our decisions that we make. So, um, you know, this was a really big thing for me because once I got this word, I, I had direction. And I remember I was very insecure at this time um, because dealing with somebody who was um, emotionally abusive and, and, like just always made me feel like I had to compare myself to other women. Um, I was very hurt. And so God told me to look at Proverbs 31. And so I want to go over there. I want to go to that scripture so I could show you because like I said, I was very insecure and I didn't really like myself. And so God told me to look at this. So let's see, I'm going to go there right now. And I'm gonna... All right, guys. So I'm going to try to keep this as raw as possible. Um, I, I kind of felt like I struggled reading that, but it's because I've never worth, read this version. And um, this is still a very sensitive topic for me because it brings me back to uh, this time in my life where I needed a word, where I, I felt like I didn't have value. And I was comparing myself to so many women and I just didn't feel valuable. Um, so this just makes me a little emotional 
because I, I read this word and God still speaks to me about it. So let's just go back to Proverbs 31, where it says, um, let's say it's chapter, uh, Proverbs 31, verse 25, and I'm going to read down. So it says, strength, um, wait, it says, strength and honor are her clothing. She shall rejoice in time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom and on her tongue is the law of kindness. She watches over the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. Charm is dece uh, deceitful and beauty is passing, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. Listen here. God speaks directly to us, each individual woman. That's what's so beautiful about this chapter because I was thinking in my mind like, wow, I'm basic. This woman's better than me. I don't have anything special. This is why this person doesn't love me. This is why I don't have value, which is all a lie. Um, and when I read this, when God gave me the word, uh, the prophetic word, God told me to go to Proverbs 31. And I thought it was just going to be like motivational, like, you know, you are a woman of God. You are worthy to be praised. This is this is this. Like I thought I, I I remember women saying Proverbs 31, but I never really read it. So when I read it, I just want to go back to this verse. Um he God says on verse 29, on Proverbs 31, verse 29, he says, Many daughters have done well. Many women have done great things. Many women are beautiful. Many women have done well. But you excel them all. And when he says you, it's you it's who's ever reading this bible you excel them all in your own special way and that verse gave me so much confidence and that was the the uh, defining moment in my confidence as a woman where i i stopped comparing and i was able to pick myself up and start my healing journey now i wasn't celibate right after that i didn't start my celibacy journey until may of 2020 um, it was, uh, once I literally, it was right before I had my baby, um, I started that journey and, um, I'm still on it. You know, I'm still, I'm almost one year in by the grace of God and I'm so thankful, but, um, it, it really helped me in this because when God says many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is passing. But a woman who fears the Lord, she, she shall be praised. And it just allows you to understand that. Charm is deceitful and beauty is passing. Charm is deceitful. Deceitful. If you look at others and you're judging yourself according to the outside and what others do, you're always going to find somebody who may look better than you, who may be more beautiful than you, or whatever you perceive to be that. But God says it's not about that. It's a woman who loves the Lord, who shall be praised. And that's something that can only be from inside. That's something only God can really bless you with is that conviction. And, and like you see, she opens her mouth with wisdom, wisdom. She's And on her tongue is the law of kindness. She watches over the ways of her household. Like, I mean, this is, this is talk of like faithfulness, holiness, wisdom, kindness. These are things that only God can really give you. So it made me stop looking so much on the outside and really realize that the beauty that I'm looking for, the beauty that's going to set me apart and allow me to see my value wasn't in my body, wasn't in my looks, but it was deeper than that. And so I just wanted to read this and just show you how strategic God is when it comes to his direction for us. God literally if you seek him you will find whatever you're looking for and i needed a word and god gave me all of this and to be honest um god has spoken to me through these notes and i keep them because i think it's a it's a continuous word it's not just a word for me it's a word for who's ever watching it as well when you hear a word from god you have to know that it falls on fertile ground if you are if you have a fertile ground and you hear a seed then you have to take it you have to say wow that's for me wow i needed that while I am dealing with these insecurities um, or whatever it is. And so today also another thing that I was um, 
reading is it says uh about repentance and when it comes to repentance it's the first step of repentance is responsibility and i looked up repentance and it says is a call to persons to make a radical turn from one way of life to another so it's really repentance is realizing that this is a problem whatever i have been doing isn't good it's i need to make a radical change a radical turn from one way to another and so the steps of repentance is responsibility it's taking responsibility for your actions and saying this isn't good for me this doesn't work for me i don't want to do this anymore something has to be better then recognizing that the next step is recognizing what you have done is dead wrong there's no if ands buts or maybes there's no excuses you don't have to go to 10 people to get to get to know that it's wrong you know what's right you know what's wrong, but a lot of times we refuse to acknowledge what's wrong because we want to do what's wrong. And God knows that. And you will be judged upon the things that you do. Um, regret. Regret is a good thing. It's healthy. You should regret the things that you do. True remorse for doing wrong. And that's the last one. It's true remorse for doing wrong and committing to never repeating the act regardless of the temptation or situation. Listen, you guys. I deal with that daily. When men reach out to me that I used to deal with, when temptation comes to get that attention, when I have that desire where I don't want to be alone or that temptation comes to talk to that old friend or whatever, I have to count the cost and say, Sierra. Mm -mm -mm. Sierra, do you remember when you used to listen to your desires? Do you remember when you used to have these thoughts in your mind to do something and you would listen to it and then right after you would do it, you would still be unfulfilled? Remember that thought. Remember that thought. Remember how you felt after you did what your mind told you to do. I didn't plan on talking about this, but this is another thing that I've been really dealing with lately was... Um, the difference between reality and our mind. I realize sometimes in my mind, I'll have an idea and it sounds good. You know, it will literally sound good. And I can, I use, I can use sex as it. I can use sex or sex or I can use desserts. Um, for me, it's like, I have this, this idea in my head of what I think sex will be, let's say with a guy. And I'll be like, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Oh my gosh, I'm going to do this. And then when I do it, it's not that. It's not that. And even after I do it, I'm not satisfied. And I'm talking about past situations. And I would be like, how is that possible? Like, why isn't it what I want it to be? Like, I had this in my mind. Why isn't it? Or like, let's say I want a dessert and I'm trying to be eat clean and I'm like, Mm, this dessert would be so good. Only if I do it, I know it's going to be good. Let's say it's dairy. And then I do it. And now my stomach is aching and I'm in pain and I don't feel good. And now I feel nasty inside. And I'm like, ah, oh, why did I do that? And that's what life is. It's, it's, our minds are so, our hearts, and the Bible says our hearts are so deceptive. Our desires are not true. And it's because we don't sometimes, you know, our mind is against us. And, um, you know, I had, I don't know if it's in the Bible or what it was, but I have this quote written down. And it says, the battle for believers is one within the mind. It's one and lost within the mind. Everything is in the mind, the battlefield of the mind. Everything that we do starts in our mind. It starts in our heart. And either we're going to act on it or we're not. And so I, I had to learn one of my biggest things of healing for me has been distinguishing what is true and what is not. My mind tells me all type of stuff. My mind will tell me, oh, send this person a happy birthday message. It's their birthday. But then I have to think logically. I have to get outside of what my mind is telling me and say, Sierra, why are you sending that happy birthday message? Are you looking for attention? Yeah, you're looking for attention. What happens if you get that attention? What happens if that person reaches out and wants to hang out with you? What happened the last time you hung out with somebody? What was the cost for that? Uh, one time it cost me rape. One time it cost me my body. One time it cost me my mind. 
Um, it could cause me to fall into a dark place. It could cause me to fall back into a toxic cycle of relationships. It could delay my 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 progress when it comes to um, me being married one day. I don't know, but I don't really care. And I don't really want to know. I don't need to know. I know better. So guess what? That happy birthday text is not going to be sent. That happy birthday message is good. There's going to be, trust me, there's plenty of women that will send that person that message. So I hope you're catching the drift of what I'm saying. But let's just know that your mind is going to lie to you. And any person that goes after everything that their mind says, rather, even if it's sleeping in, like, oh, I'm so tired, I don't want to wake up. But you know that you need to wake up early. You know you got things to do. If you listen to your body every day and the only time you can wake up is for work, but everything else you make excuses for, then that you're going against God, you're never going to be able to be your best self. You have to go against your desires. You have to learn self-control. So I encourage you to just work on your self-control today. I hope that this word helped you. I hope that the revelation that God gives me is um, helps you in some way. It's kind of hard for me to put into words because it's such a touchy subject. Even though it was back in 2019, I haven't really, I, I don't really go back to these notes too often. Um... But going back to them do bring me back to a little bit of anxiety and a little bit of sadness because I remember where I was at. I was very desperate for a word. and I'm thankful for God to give it to me. But these notes right here have transformed my life forever and they're still doing it. Um, but I'm going to I have another message on here and I had to kind of break it up, but I'm going to combine them and I'm going to post a full video on YouTube. I hope you that you would uh, listen to the whole uh, my whole story on uh, this encounter that I had with God and know that God's word is still active and it's so important to just reflect and really think. And I want you to really think at a moment where God gave you a time where he told you to repent, to stop, to do something. And I want you to reflect on that. I want you to really think about it and say, is it time for me to really listen to God? Okay, sorry. Um, is it time for me to really listen to God? And um, I hope that you do. I hope you guys have a wonderful Wednesday. Peace. Mama see you.